friends, it's Caroline again. Welcome back for another video. Today, we're gonna to talk about a topic that is very important to know for your board examination, and that is pediatric growth and developmental milestones. I know that this can be a challenging topic for many students, but today we're going to break down a few of these and make them easier to understand. As always, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you can continue to stay up to date on the latest videos each week. So, what are pediatric developmental milestones? These are specific skills that the majority of children are able to do at certain ages, such as smiling, talking, and throwing a ball. All the milestones that we teach here and within our courses are based on the current CDC guidelines. According to the CDC, children reach milestones with speech, play, learning, and movement. It is important to keep in mind that babies who are born early may be delayed when it comes to reaching milestones. It typically takes them about 24 months to catch up. I want to first start this discussion by talking about birth weight. Let's say that a baby was born at 7 pounds. It is normal for this baby to lose about 7-10% to of their birth weight after delivery due to the extra fluid that they were born with. Now, think with me for a second. When do we want them to be back to birth weight and weigh 7 pounds? Definitely by that two-week appointment. You've got it. And when do we want them to weigh about 14 pounds and double their birth weight? If you were thinking 6 months, you would be correct. And when do we want them to weigh at least 21 pounds and triple their birth weight? Definitely by 12 months. Let's next discuss two-month-old infants. A milestone that we would expect to see at this stage of development would be a social smile, and we would expect the infant to be able to look at their parents' faces. They should also start to make sounds other than crying. Additionally, between two to three months is when the posterior fontanelle closes. At four months, we expect babies to look at people when they speak and they should be able to hold their head steady with support. At this stage, babies are often opening their mouths for bottles, holding onto their toys, and often bringing their hands and those toys to their mouths. At six months, a baby should be able to sit up, laugh, and roll in both directions. This is also when we may see the first tooth erupt. At nine months old, separation anxiety often begins when infants are not with their parents. They also start to develop unilateral manipulation skills around this time and start to, start to do things with one hand or the other. Keep in mind that true hand dominance does not start until around 10 to 11 months of age. By 12 months old, babies should be able to say mama or dada with meaning and two to four words. Additionally, this is when children should be able to pull to a stand and walk while holding onto furniture. The anterior fontanelle may also close around this time, However, this can also happen as late as 18 months. By 15 to 18 months, children should be able to use a spoon and walk without holding on to anything. They should also be following simple directions, using items like books and phones with purpose, and should be finger feeding themselves. By two years old, the child should have their first full set of teeth. Additionally, they should be able to use two word sentences and kick a ball. I like to remember this by thinking that we have two feet to kick that ball. By three years old, they should be able to copy a circle, throw a ball, use a three word sentence, and ride a tricycle. This one is easy to remember because a tricycle has three wheels. This is also when we begin to re routinely check blood pressure in children. At four years old, we expect children to be able to speak in sentences with four or more words. Additionally, these children should be able to draw a cross and copy a square. I like to remember this by thinking about how many points a square has and how many points a cross has, which is four. At five years old, we expect children to be able to count to 10, hop on one foot, and some children at this age may be able to ride a bicycle. We are going to review these milestones by doing a couple of practice questions. So first up here, we have a patient who comes to the clinic upset that their four month old daughter is not yet rolling in both directions. They tell the nurse practitioner that their friend's child was able to roll at four months old. How should the nurse practitioner respond to the parents? Is it A, I'm going to have to refer your child to a pediatric physical therapist. B, your child will not start to show signs of rolling until about seven months old. C, your child may not start to roll in both directions until six months of age. Or D, all babies reach milestones at different ages, and there is no concern as long as your child is rolling by nine months of age. So let's break this question down. We know that children start to roll in both directions at about six months of age. While some children may meet milestones earlier than others, 
It is important for the nurse practitioner to reassure the parents that this child is not delayed, but rather developing appropriately. It is not expected for all children to be able to roll in both directions at four months, but rather six months old. So great job of those, to those of you who chose option C. Let's do one more practice question on pediatric growth and development. When should a child be able to draw a square or a cross? Is it A, two years old, B, three years old, C, four years old, or D, five years old? If you remember the memory trick that I gave you all earlier in this video, then you would have chosen option C, four years old. Remember, a cross has four points and so does a square. When I was studying for my board examination, I often tried to come up with memory tricks like this that really help to make pediatric growth and development easier to understand. Well, that is it for today. I hope that you all found this video helpful as you prepare for your boards. This is certainly not all of the milestones that you may need to know for your boards. So remember, you can always refer back to your courses for additional in-depth content. We are all rooting for you here at SMNP Reviews, and we cannot wait to see you become the real deal. We will see you back next week for another video.